I'm going to quit saying that there are certain books and themes of the Bible I'm not going to write on because it seems like every time I do that, that's what I end up on next. We are going to have the ride of our lives ahead of us. We're becoming aware of the kind of Babylon that surrounds us. I'm praying for a mighty and a transforming Word of God to fall upon us. I certainly would never have just chosen off the top of my head to have written a Bible study on the book of Daniel. I would have been far too intimidated for that. Part one, the first six chapters, is on living with some kind of integrity in a very enticing world in our own Babylon. The second half is going to be on prophecy and eschatology. We're going to study some end time events as well as seeing some prophecy that came forth through the mouth of Daniel that has already been fulfilled. So I cannot wait to get into that. I had more and more books and resources on my desk until I was carrying them home, bringing them back the next morning. I have uh, memories of being in the hair salon, getting my hair cut and colored with a lap full of, of books everywhere you can imagine, just dragging those resources with me. This entire book is going to speak to us. Like tomorrow morning's news, we will be spoken to. And it occurred to me that we're living in our own kind of Babylon. When my grandmother went to the country store and she checked out her groceries, not one time did she glance upon the front of the magazine and think, I think I'm supposed to look like that. <laughs> and is that real? When I was trying to think of a modern day Babylon, I could have thought of any one of a hundred cities in the United States, my own included. But I settled on Los Angeles because to me, it's the media that is driving this image, this image building that is just driving American women crazy. Everything that we're seeing, everything that we watch on television, all the advertisements, so much that's before us that we feel like we never can measure up to. You do not dress like this on accident. You only dress like this because you mean to dress like this. We clothe ourselves in humility on purpose. While I was here, I thought, you, you know, Beth, you didn't even know coming into it how much this was true. I was right there on Rodeo Drive, and, and I was watching the people and the expressions on their faces walking by, and, and I, I watched the, this look of self-importance, this trying to put this image forward that we all know in the dark of night is a lie. The, the idol of self, and it is a, a pit of self-absorption that makes us so miserable. That's what I pray we're going to be able to in some way address and ask God to help us work on. The whole question is this, can we live in this kind of society, which we do, but without becoming defiled by it? I'm not talking about living under a rock or in a closet somewhere. I'm talking about living out in our culture where you and I have to be relevant, where we are called to minister, but in such a way that we rub off on it instead of it rubbing off on us. I think I could use this Bible study. How about you? Then let's do this thing together. And I am talking to you.